the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. So let me uh, direct my remarks today to the, as they say, the elephant in the room. <laughs> Mr. Mark De La Rosa, Department Chair of Theology at Cardinal Gibbons High School, and his merry band of 80 sophomores, uh, Mark De La Rosa. What a, what a beautiful name that is. It's so lyrical, De La Rosa. I wonder if it means anything. It might, sounds like it means something. But Anyway, Mark, I want to uh, thank you for making this. Where, where are you? Who, where, are you here somewhere, Mark? Please tell. Oh, there you are. Okay. <laughs> what, does De La Rosa mean anything? Or? Of the rose? On the rose. Beautiful. Lyrical. Anyway, I want to deeply thank you for making this annual sojourn in the Holy Trinity. And we are so grateful that you find it beneficial to your soul and that you want to share this experience with your students. Our people are excited and honored to show you their hospitality, their regard for you and your children, and especially to share our worship with you. You've actually come on a uh, unique and significant day in the liturgical cycle of worship for the Orthodox. This is the first Sunday of our Lent, and where pious and Orthodox Christians all over the world celebrate the restoration of the icons back into the church. During the 8th and 9th century, there had been an 150-year ban forced upon the church of icons. Her icons were confiscated, destroyed, defaced, set ablaze, and people who had icons, some of them were actually persecuted and martyred. For the people, for the Orthodox people, especially two high-profile women, women who I can't even believe they were saints, they were manipulative, they were conniving, they were ruthless. But uh, they felt that this ban of icons was intolerable, and so did many of the women back in those days. It was the women who led this charge to restore the icons. You know, it's funny, in the uh, world of sports, how they treat their athletes. These people can have stellar seasons, all-star performances, doing everything right for so many years, and yet if they make one critical mistake, that's what they're remembered for. And I don't even want to mention their names because I don't want them to be remembered for the mistake. One of them, I don't know how much you realize how that some of these people go to their graves depressed because of this mistake, and, and everyone knows about it, and one of them even committed suicide. But in the spiritual world, it's the exact opposite. You can live a life of depravity the whole time, and yet the Lord, all he's looking for is one virtue, one act of sincere repentance, and he'll find a way to save you. He is our Savior. Saints Irene and Theodora, these saints who restored the icons back into the church, loved beauty. And for that reason alone, because of their love for beauty, never mind that they were conniving and ruthless and uh, manipulative and crazy people, forgive me. <laughs> Not only did they gain their salvation, they gained sainthood because of this one virtue, beauty. They restored beauty. Because for the pious and orthodox Christian, worship can never be just a matter of the intellect. That doesn't make sense to us. Worship without icons, without divine images, becomes worship without beauty. And for us, worship without beauty is unthinkable. 
because beauty is the very soul of orthodoxy. As I've told my people all along, beauty is part of our theology. And I'll tell you why. Because our liturgy is an icon itself of the eternal liturgy that is constantly going on in heaven, where Christ himself serves as and celebrates as the liturgist. That's why the priest or the bishop is called the icon of Christ. And the cherubim and the seraphim are the choir. They're singing resounding voices all through eternity. Holy, holy, holy are you, O God. In 843, the year of our Lord, the Empress Theodora finally and officially ended the prohibition and led a procession back into the church, into the, uh, into the interior of the church with icons. And in a moment, you are going to see our children reenact this very procession into the church with icons. And I did some quick math over the weekend. Today marks the 1,180th anniversary of this historic event, Theodora, the Empress, marching into the church with her icons, with everyone following her. When you watch these children in procession, I want you to not only see the icon, but I also want you to see their faces and their little hands, because the children themselves are living icons. In fact, you yourselves are living icons. Icones to Theu. That's why when we do not treat each other with respect, or we don't even treat ourselves with respect, it is a sin. Because by doing so, you are defacing an icon. So please, let us learn to get along. Let us learn to love one another. Stop being hostile. Stop being antagonistic. Stop being, you know, gossiping about people and uh, bullying people. It, 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 there's something in us that makes us do these things, and we've got to find a way to stand up against it. There is a place for what the Greeks call thymos. There is a place for anger. When you come in and light a candle, that is a place to ask the Lord Lord, you gave me anger. You gave me thimos. The passion of thimos is a good thing. However, if we misuse it, if we use it against one another, it is not a good thing. So Lord, when you light that candle, ask him, Lord, help me to be a good steward of the thimos that you gave me. Help me to stand up against my own anger, my own irrational anger against my brother and help me to stand up against the evil one who is suggesting these evil things against one another. 